y'all, it's me, Cheesy Panini. Before everything else, I just wanted to let you know I'll be moving back home from my relative's house. Our house currently doesn't have any internet and there's a lot of things I need to take care of in the move so I won't be able to upload any videos for a while. But don't worry, I have a lot of ideas for future videos so once I get my internet running and gotten all of the house stuff taken care of, I'll be back to making more content. Since a lot of you guys seem to like my experimentation with beds, I decided to do the same thing with toilets this time, as requested by BlueJT Gaming. I don't know what his obsession with toilets are about, but I guess I'll just roll with it. For the very first build, I'll be using solar toilets. The first thing I noticed with solar toilets and its three other siblings is the bright and round toilet covers they had. The sprite made me think about lights or beady little eyes. I hope you guys aren't squeamish of bugs because for this one I'll be building a praying mantis. The paint I used for most of it is deep lime paint with an exception to some parts. Let's start with the head. The first item I used are white team blocks where I placed two solar toilets on opposite sides facing away from each other with a gap in the middle. The toilets are painted with just lime paint because painting it with a deeper paint kind of gets rid of the shine. That's actually something you need to look out for when using paint so it's a good idea to try both versions before settling with one. The shape of the head is somewhat of a reverse triangle and the mandibles are quite small and barely noticeable that you don't actually need to make them. But for my version I added large mandibles anyway because I thought it looked better and I know that technically because of that one detail it's no longer realistic or true to life but this is a game, this is art. You're free to interpret it the way you want to, and I see a lot of people trying their very best to make their boats as true to life as possible, but I think it's also important to just let yourself have a little fun and deviate from the normal. Now when you see the toilet eyes, you'd think that it would be glowy at night, right? Unfortunately, these toilets don't glow at all. I wanted to put a gem spark wall behind it, but it's just a little too bright for the head. So I decided to use these little green lights. You can't really place them on walls and you need to put them on blocks but because of the power of echo blocks, I was able to place them securely in front of these bamboo fences. This way, it just feels like part of the antenna. Fences are really useful like that, they can take the place of vertical line details. I even use them for the neck of the mantis. Let's move on to the main body. For the thorax or the chest part, I wasn't really picking specific blocks while I was making the draft of this mantis before recording and just randomly picked out white team blocks. To my surprise, it makes for really interesting shapes because of the argyle or diamond-like patterns when it blends with itself. And I really like the fact that its other versions don't blend with each other and lets me do details like this. For the abdomen or the lower portion of the body, insects usually have these segments and I wanted to illustrate that here. I used emerald gem spark blocks so it would light up at night. I hammered them with granite platforms underneath it which results into this detail that makes it look like it has multiple lines. Underneath, I placed some crystal walls to just make it kind of shiny, and since it was darker than the blocks and platforms, it kind of just pops out. I made this part a little thicker than the rest so I could hide the overhang of the walls. Let's finish this build off by adding its limbs and wings. The front legs of a mantis have this sight-like shape and the best item to use for that particular shape, in my opinion, was the bone platform. It's the only platform in the game that curves that way. Paired with hammered team blocks and some sunplate blocks, it makes a pretty decent front leg. 
For the wings, I used red dynasty blocks because I like how it has this darker line underneath each block which makes it look like a shadow. And I thought it would work as that outer covering of a wing while the actual wing would be translucent and made of glass and green stained glass which I painted white. This detail is actually kind of interesting. Apparently, since stained glass kind of lets in some colored light when it's covered with blocks, you get this kind of interesting gradient effect when paired with white paint, when some parts are covered with blocks and some parts are wide open. I can see this as something really fun to use for various builds and probably has some interesting color combinations when used with other paints. So yeah, I think this is an interesting detail to experiment with. Now, I know that a praying mantis has six legs, but the thing is, it's a little difficult to fit the last pairs of legs in and it's solely not because I completely forgot that there was another pair of legs and I'm already in the middle of editing when I realized this. No, not at all! I was just merely following the example of Bugs Life. See, they have a four-legged mantis too. Yeah! Anyways, for builds like these that are symmetrical or similarly built on both sides, it's a good idea to start on one side and once you're happy with that side, continue on the other side. When you do it that way, it makes it easier for you to spot mistakes. Like this one over here, that I totally knew was there and I didn't just see while I was editing. Don't worry, I fixed it, it's right up there, it's gone, it's fine. There's no mistake, nothing's a mistake, yeah. And there you go, a praying mantis, ha! second build, I'll be using the classic toilet to make a metal tower. Let's start with the top part of the tower. When building with platings, you have to keep in mind that they look different depending on where you place it. When placed on this row, the tiles look curved, but when you place it above that row, you get tiles that have diagonal segments like this. The same can be said when it's placed horizontally. Its walls also have that same visual property. Primarily, I used grey paint for this build, except for some parts that I painted black for contrast. We are actually going to be placing the toilets right over here, facing opposite directions to create this tooth-like pattern we normally see in castles or towers, which are called battlements or crenellations. Now I didn't want to give this tower the usual stone brick style and kind of wanted it to look somewhat futuristic and high tech, but still had the shape of a medieval tower. To achieve that, I experimented around with all sorts of metal blocks and bricks and added Martian platforms to kind of hint that this tower is run by electricity. I actually placed some wrought iron fences behind these toilets, but I had to add it later on because I completely forgot. Adding them kind of made the Merlons a lot thicker. Let's work on the middle section of the tower next. I like to place the base wall or block first, which is the copper plating wall before I add all the intricate details just so I have an idea of how the shape and size of the build would be. I used some sandstone brick walls and pearl wood walls to line the sides and added a column of platinum brick walls on the inner sides. They might not technically be made of metal, but the paint and the way they are placed make it a little ambiguous or hard to tell if it is made of stone or wood instead of metal. What I really love about Terraria sprites is that they're complex enough to look interesting and unique from each other, but they're simple enough for you to use your imagination to use it in ways that make it look different from its initial purpose. I really do encourage people to use different types of items without thinking too much about what they are so you could discover different ways of making things. To kind of connect the top part of the tower to the middle section, I also placed lines of Martian platforms over the platinum bricks. And to make this section a little less uniform or monotonous, I placed some patches of cogwall, 
luminite brick wall, purple rain wallpaper, and adamantite beam wall. Now for the bottom part of the tower, I didn't want it to look too different from the rest of the tower so I borrowed some patterns from the top part and applied it here. I also made the walls of this section with patches of other walls but for this one, I only used patches of tin plating wall to make it a little less busy than the middle section. As for the entrance, I mixed a couple of items together implementing the Martian platform details and topping it with a Martian chest. For the actual door, I wanted it to be simple and decided to use boreal wood walls and hammered it in places to create this jagged vertical line. And there you have it, a metal tower. For the third build, I'll be using lizard toilets because it has this rocky look and since it was rounded and not as sparkly or bright as other toilets, it's easy to hide. These things are all important because I'll be using this toilet to make a volcano. So initially, I was using ash blocks to form the volcano, but since I'm making this in the corruption biome, I decided to switch to ebon sand, hardened ebon sand, and a little bit of ebon stone at the bottom. I made the base shape of the volcano first and started placing the mechanisms that will be creating the erupting volcano effect, which are fog machines, chimneys, geysers, and toilets, along with timers and switches. It's important to place them first, then build the rest of the volcano around it so you'd have lesser mistakes. I mean, it will be kind of tiring to dig up what you placed over and over again when you realize you should have placed something somewhere else. Just so you have an idea on how to place the items, I would place the toilets at the very top of the crater, making sure it's not covered by any tiles above it and at its sides. You can place the fog machines and chimneys underneath the blocks that hold the toilets since the smoke and fog effects just pass through the blocks. For geysers, you'd want to place them a couple of blocks below. I like placing them at varying heights so that they come out unevenly. Since fog machines turn itself on as soon as you place them, you don't really need to do anything special with them. With chimneys, you just need to toggle it with a switch once, so the smoke changes into this type of smoke. For the poop makers or toilets, I connected the one second timers. Now you'd probably wonder why you even need those poopers. Just forget for a second that those are poop. Those can totally be the debris that fly about when a volcano erupts. For the geysers, I used half second timers because they take a lot longer to activate. Another thing to note is that geysers will release flames directly above its spout unless you place blocks directly above it. When you do, the flames travel through the line of blocks and gets released at the very end of that line. And let's not forget about the lava. When you put some on the crater, keep in mind the placement of the toilets, because they will get removed when the lava hits them. Like me, you might want to have the lava flowing around without destroying the toilets. To do this, dig up a small part of the crater, put some lava, then hammer the sides so you'll get flowing lava on both sides. Do the same for the other side and a couple more all over the body of the volcano as you fill it up with blocks and walls. Make sure to leave some gaps in between, otherwise the lava won't flow down at all. And here it is, an erupting volcano. For the fourth build, I used a bamboo toilet to create a sword which I named Reaper's Dread. I'm not an expert at naming weapons, I just wanted something that sounded kinda edgy. 
I used the bamboo toilet as the central part of the hilt and placed a chlorophyte brick wall above it so it would have some kind of interesting detail despite not being able to place anything on top of the toilet. I didn't have a specific reference for the look of this sword, I pretty much just winged it. But I did like the idea of copying the shape of Cloud Strife's sword from Final Fantasy. I also wanted a dark blade and when I saw the gold starry block I thought it was perfect and paired it with crystal block on the other side. The middle part I filled with rope because I thought it would be a pretty interesting detail and placed titan stone at the middle so it connects to it. I could just leave it as it is but I wanted to add a little extra to the build and added a frame around it. Again I didn't have a specific idea I just wanted it to somewhat complement the sword so I put bits of red on it. As I built the frame, it somehow ended up looking like a really fancy CPU case. When I finished it, I realized that when the sky switched to nighttime, it gets a little too dark and you can hardly see the sword in detail, so I decided to go back to it and added some diamond gem sparks here and there, and it really illuminated the sword so much more than before. And here's the first sword, Reaper's Dread. And yes, you heard that right, I'm making one more build in this video and it is yet another sword! For the fifth and final build, I'll be using green dungeon toilets and I'll be making a great sword I named Iron Faith. In contrast to the first sword, this one has more of a holy or light element to it. The name actually came from a name generator and I used it before on a character I made in Wildstar who was a medic and a prodigy doctor who was looking for a cure for the contagion. I pretty much used just grey paint for this build. Like the previous one, I used toilets as part of the hilt of the sword along with some minecart tracks and meteorite bricks. Meteorite bricks painted grey looks pretty good and kind of makes it look like the sword has white gold trim. For the actual blade, I used white team blocks and crystal blocks with some adamantite beam and meteorite bricks, kind of keeping them together. I don't know if that's even possible with real swords, but I think that it could be an interesting idea to have a sword that's made up of two halves that are different materials. As for the frame, I wanted it to be a little more complex than the first sword, but not so much as to completely overshadow the design of the sword. I also placed bits of diamond gem sparks here and there so that it still lights up at night. One thing I discovered while making the frame for this sword is how platinum bricks apparently merges with gem spark when it's placed on top of it, but when placed at the bottom, it retains its unmerged shape, even though the gem spark clearly merges with the platinum brick. I guess for this one, I kind of wanted something like an intricate tarot card look. And it's done. The Iron Faith. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, it took me a whole lot longer to finish than I thought, but it was really fun to experiment. Speaking of experimenting, I tried a different way of showing the items used for each build for this video. And I just want to know, did you guys like it or was it confusing? Do you prefer this or the old way? Please let me know down in the comments below so I know how to improve. If you had fun watching this kind of video, please do leave a like. I kind of want to try making another video like this, but maybe on a smaller scale, like 3-4 to four builds in one video instead. And when I do, what item do you think I should experiment with? 
leave your suggestion in the comments down below and subscribe for more cheesy content. Oh, and before this video ends, I would like to thank my generous patrons for this month, Sean G. Zinoski, Kyle, Rothrook, Scarfy, and my newest patron, but longtime supporter, Chaos. Thank you guys so much for your support. I absolutely appreciate it and you guys are what helped me pay for some of my bills and encourage me to keep working. Anyways, that's it for now. I'm just gonna go do my thing and you guys do your thing and I'll see you guys later. Take it easy. Stay cheesy.